mention here is that grizzly bears and black bears species identification is more for your enjoyment and understanding of the two species rather than to identify what you should be doing in an encounter with a grizzly bear or a black bear. Or this information could be helpful if you're hunting bears and you need to know the difference between a grizzly bear and a black bear. Let's start out with some common misconceptions and things that you should not be using to identify a bear's. In Montana, we have a lot of different colors of bears, of both grizzly bears and black bears. So an unreliable attribute that you should avoid using to identify a species is the coat color. Additionally, although grizzly bears and black bears uh, in their own species are sexually dimorphic, meaning that males are larger than females at their adult size, grizzly bears and black bears overlap in body size quite a bit. And so using the animal's size is not a good way to tell if they're a grizzly bear or a black bear. There are some small grizzly bears. In fact, most female grizzly bears that are adults are under 350 pounds in the Yellowstone ecosystem. And there are many black bears in Montana that are as large as a lot of grizzly bears. Also, another way you should not be attempting to identify a bear is by their droppings. Particularly, uh, we've noticed people talk about the size of the droppings. So grizzly bears and black bears can have overlapping size of their droppings and droppings vary a lot depending on what the animal has been eating. The only really reliable way to identify a bear by its droppings is to, to do a DNA analysis. However, there are some pretty reliable ways you can identify the two species and they're mostly based on body shape. So again, remember that even though these are the, the most reliable features you can use, that you need to use a combination of characteristics like the animal as a whole rather than one particular feature to identify them. I'll also mention that a lot of this takes a lot of practice and that uh, it takes time and seeing a lot of bears to know what species you're looking at. So we'll start with the most identifiable feature from far away, and that's the presence of a shoulder hump on a grizzly bear. So the grizzlies typically have a shoulder hump when their head is level, so they're facing up or straight ahead. Um, but when their heads are down, both grizzly bears and black bears can show a shoulder hump, but usually it's much larger on a grizzly bear. When their head is up, typically the black bears won't show a, a shoulder hump and the rump will be the highest point on their back. Next, facial profile. So grizzly bears tend to have more of a concave or dish shaped forehead so that there's a little um, bump uh, between their, their snout and their forehead. And black bears, it tends to be straighter, so the line is straight between the nose and the, and the forehead, typically. Again, there's individual variation. Claw length is another feature. Obviously, this isn't one you're going to use in most identification uh, cases because you don't often get to see the claws of the bear. But if you're, say, watching a bear from your car and it's walking on a paved road, you may see the claws. Grizzly bears have very long claws. Adult grizzlies could have two to four inch long claws and adult black bears an inch or two long. And then the shape is different too. So claws on grizzly bears are kind of gently curved and black bears, they're kind of more abruptly curved and they're sharper. So that's another feature difference between the two. Along with that is ear shape. So grizzly bears have um, smaller rounder ears in proportion to the size of their head and black bears, their ears are taller in proportion to their head and, and larger and a little pointier as well. One thing that can that can account for variation in this if you're looking at ear shape is the age of the bear. So young grizzly bears as well as, as um, black bears, their ears will look more pronounced and taller because they haven't filled out the muscle in their neck as much and the hair may be sh uh, shorter when they're very young. So their ears may look taller even though an, a, most adult grizzlies have a smaller rounder ear. So those are the main ways to tell. We're going to run through some photos here and, and, and show you what we're, we're I wanted to mention that these are all black bear colors that uh, exist in the wild and so this uh, in Montana we don't have all of these colors. We don't have the Kermode or spirit black bear which is pictured in the center and we don't have the glacier colored like blue-gray 
bare on the middle right side, but all the other colors could be found in Montana. And just about half of our bears, our black bears in Montana are not black. So we have a lot of variation. We have cinnamon color black bears and blonde and brown and um, what a lot of different variations. So um, another thing I'll mention here with color is that a lot of people will refer to black bears that are not black as color phase. And color phase doesn't mean that they are going through different phases of their life, that they're different colors. That means that the it's a, a, a phase, um, meaning a, a variation of that species color. So a brown colored black bear will be brown its whole life. These are all grizzly bears. And I just wanna point out the variation here, anywhere from a silver color to black, uh, brown, chocolate, uh, blonde, and I, I like the photo of the bear at the center here in the bottom showing a black colored grizzly bear with a brown snout, which is often what people think of when they think of a black bear's color. So don't use color to tell them apart. A little identification quiz here. These two bears are the same species, so guess which one you think they are. And if you guessed black bear, you are correct. So these are both black bears, a brown and a black colored black bear. And I threw this one in here because it gives you a little bit to think about with the, the shoulder hump. When a black bear's head is down again, they could show a little shoulder hump, but when their head is up, um, the rump is the highest point on the back typically. This bear also, both bears have uh, pointier, taller ears and pretty straight. Now I'll take a look at this photograph and you can see they're looking at the dish shaped forehead here. This is a grizzly bear the small round ears, and that's pretty much all you can tell from this photo. Those are two pretty good clues. Now this bear is a little bit of a tricky one. We have um, a brown color. We have pretty taller, like I would say taller ears, short, sharp claws, a lack of a shoulder hump. However, this bear has a dish-shaped forehead. So most clues here point to black bear. Although the dished forehead may throw you off, this is a black bear. Now these two bears, obviously the same species, a lot more classic black bear. We're looking at a straight forehead, taller pointier ears. And even though that female bear has a little bit of a hump, I wouldn't call that a shoulder hump as much as I would just long hair in her on her shoulder. So this is a black bear and her cub, very straight. These bears are all the same species again, a female with her young. These are grizzly bears. Grizzly bear, uh, classic grizzly bear characteristics here. We've got a, a shoulder hump on the female, especially the cubs are young, so they haven't developed the muscles uh, that make up that, that shoulder hump quite as much. Um, she has a very straight, or she has a very straight forehead, which could be throw, could throw you off a little bit um, because that's not, again, the classic grizzly bear characteristic, but um, you look at her small round ears and her big shoulder hump. And in fact, you can see her claws are very long. Um, and, and, and that's another good characteristic is that long length and shape of the claws. And this one is a grizzly bear. So, tall, uh, or not tall, got a uh, shoulder hump on this bear with her head up. She's got medium length ears. I mean, having looked at a lot of bears, it's clear this one is a grizzly bear. So that one might be a characteristic that threw you off. And then her forehead is dished. And those are the best characteristics. I like this photo because it gives you a little clue as to the history of the name of this species. Grizzly bear's name comes from um, the, the fact that uh, in like on the Great Plains and um, in the uh, prairies, they a lot of grizzly bears in this area have like a light golden or gray look to the tips of their fur. And grizzled means like grayed. So um, another name for grizzly bears would be silver tips. And so that would this just shows that coloration. And again, even though this may be a common color here, it doesn't mean that all of the bears are that color and it's not a good feature to use to identify them, but it's just a little history um, of, the, of the animal species name. Again, we showed the photo earlier as a grizzly bear. He has small round ears, a very clearly dish-shaped forehead, 
a shoulder hump. Um, and again, his color is not a good one. Uh, this bear um, tricked, has tricked um, some expert uh, bear biologists before, so it could be a confusing one for someone new to identification. But this is actually a black bear. So he is kind of standing on a slope that's that's going downhill. So his front half of his body is lower than his back half. Um, he has large ears, a very straight forehead. And the reason he's showing such a shoulder hump is the angle his head and body are on that slope. And so it exaggerates his hump, but he's a really big male black bear. Um, and if you were standing on level ground, you probably wouldn't see that so much, but you have to, again, have to use a combination of characters.